developments in that horror in Brooklyn. Accused killer Levi Aaron is expected to be arraigned this afternoon. Now, he is facing charges for the gruesome death of eight-year-old Libby Kletsky. Eyewitness News has live team coverage of the story. Anthony Johnson has more on the search of Aaron's home. We begin there with Darla Miles, live at the police precinct in East Flatbush. Darla. Good afternoon, Ken. Levy Aaron just walked out of the 67th precinct. He spent the last 30 hours inside talking to investigators. They describe his demeanor as cold and matter of fact. And throughout all of that interrogation, they still don't have a motive why. Why he targeted Libby Kletsky. While yesterday was a day of mourning for the child, today is a day of rage and anger against the suspect. Levy Aaron ducked out of the 67th precinct, but couldn't run from the vicious mob that chased him down the street. Belief on the part of the medical examiner that uh, he was uh, smothered or suffocated, uh, but there's still tests to be done. Overnight, Aaron was taken to the hospital, where he was examined for cuts and bruises, and his DNA was collected and placed in a national database. Investigators are now searching for any possible connection to other missing persons cases. Police say they have written and videotaped confessions of Aaron coldly describing how he strangled and dismembered eight-year-old Libby Kletsky, then stored his feet in the freezer and tossed other parts of the child's remains in a red suitcase in Greenwood Heights. He goes into some graphic detail as to uh, how the boy died and what he did after, after, the boy, uh, after the boy died. And he does at the end say words to the effect that he sorry for the, the trouble he's caused. Aaron claims he took the eight-year-old boy to a wedding Monday night in Rockland County, hours after he got lost walking home from day camp and asked the 35-year-old for directions. But police say no one saw the child there. Forensic evidence indicates the child had been tied to a couch with rope at Aaron's attic apartment in Kensington. Kings County District Attorney Charles Hines. He's being charged with um, felony murder, which is murder in connection with the felony of kidnapping, which is under state law, uh, murder in the first degree, punishable upon conviction by life without the possibility of parole. Now, this case is already being presented to a grand jury, and Aaron could be indicted as early as tomorrow. This afternoon, he's scheduled to be arraigned around 2.15, and afterwards, he will likely undergo a psych evaluation and be placed on suicide watch. Reporting live in East Flatbush, Darla Miles, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Darla. Well, Levy Aaron awaits his arraignment. Police are again searching his home in Brooklyn. Newscopter 7 is over the house in Kensington, which remains closed off by police. Our coverage continues now with Eyewitness News reporter Anthony Johnson live in Kensington. Anthony. Well, Lisa, when authorities were here yesterday, they pulled out computers and phone records outside of the house, and they brought it out onto the street. You could see all of the activity that was taking place then. They did return for a second day. They are still out here on 2nd Avenue, obviously this morning, still looking for more evidence. The house where little Libby Kletsky was apparently butchered remains a crime scene, taped off and barricaded as investigators continue their search for evidence in this horrific case of murder. This is where police tracked down the suspect, Levy Aaron, and he directed them to a third-floor refrigerator where police made the gruesome discovery of bloody knives and body parts. A specialized unit from the medical examiner's office is involved in the probe, which may at some point include pouring through the backyard that is now overgrown and covered in weeds. As officers assemble, the crime scene here on 2nd Avenue is growing. Boys living out in the love. <laughs> Last night, the Orthodox funeral for Libby Kletsky brought out thousands of mourners. Many had joined in the search for the eight-year-old boy. This was a night of pain and sorrow, where members of the community still try to deal with the tragedy that seems unthinkable and unbelievable a gruesome act of brutality. I hope not for these parents, but there's always a feeling of guilt. What could I have done differently? Now, authorities have been trying to talk to the suspect's parents. They asked them questions, the possible motivation for this crime. At this point, they have not been able to really come up with anything. That is the latest live from the Kensington section of Brooklyn. Anthony Johnson, Channel 7 Eyewitness News.